Hi, welcome back to Dr. O'Donovan Medicine Made Easy. My name's Dr. James O'Donovan and every Wednesday and Sunday I produce new medical education videos aimed at helping you better understand your own health. So if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button. In today's video, we're going to be discussing a really important topic, which is erectile dysfunction. In other words, the persistent inability to attain and maintain an erection in order to have sex. Now, this is an important topic because it can have negative effects on relationships, individual self-esteem, and is estimated to affect between 30 and up to 70% of men. So it's a really major problem worldwide. So in this video, we're going to be covering four main things. First of all, I'm going to take you through the causes of erectile dysfunction. Next, I'll discuss the risk factors. Thirdly, we'll cover what questions your doctor might ask you and the investigations they may consider. And finally, we'll go over treatment of erectile dysfunction. So first of all, let's discuss the causes of erectile dysfunction. Well, it's a complicated disorder with several possible causes, which can be broadly split into physiological causes and psychogenic causes. First of all, let's talk about the physiological causes. Well, it can be caused by poor functioning of the cardiovascular system. So for example, high blood pressure, high fats in the blood and diabetes, as well as neurological disorders such as multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's disease, anatomical issues affecting the penis, for example, Peyronie's disease, which is abnormal curvature of the penis or prostate cancer, or hormonal issues, for example, hypogonadism, where the body doesn't produce enough testosterone. Psychogenic causes may be situational, for example, psychiatric illnesses such as depression, or generalized, such as inability to be aroused. Drugs can also cause penile dysfunction, and those include medicines given to treat high blood pressure, antipsychotics, antidepressants, and another big reason is alcohol. So as you can tell, there are lots of different causes of erectile dysfunction, and you may have one or multiple of these at the same time. So what are the risk factors for developing issues with getting an erection? So although erectile dysfunction mainly affects older men, it can affect men at any age. The risk factors for erectile dysfunction are similar to those for cardiovascular disease, and they include things such as obesity, diabetes, high levels of fat in the blood, high blood pressure, lack of exercise and smoking. So if you do any of these things and you can modify them, for example, smoking, it'd be worthwhile stopping and seeing if this improves the effects on the erectile dysfunction. Thirdly, when do you want to see your doctor and what might they ask? Well, when you go to see the doctor, they'll want to take a detailed history by asking you questions, including present and past erection quality, lifestyle factors, including alcohol intake, smoking status and illicit drug use and previous treatments that you might have tried. They then will do a focused physical examination to identify any genitourinary, endocrine vascular or neurological causes of your erectile dysfunction. The doctor or healthcare professional may also consider doing some blood tests if these are clinically indicated. And these would include checking your glucose lipid profile and total testosterone to identify any reversible or modifiable risk factors. And remember, if you're a man watching this video and you feel anxious or embarrassed about seeing your doctor, this can be a normal feeling. But doctors see this kind of problem a lot and it's something we're very used to dealing with. So please don't hesitate to make an appointment with your nearest health professional to get assessed if this is something that is affecting you. Finally, how can erectile dysfunction be treated? Because this is probably why you're here watching this video. Well, erectile dysfunction usually responds well to a combination of lifestyle measures such as weight loss, smoking cessation and reducing alcohol consumption, as well as drug treatment. So let's have a quick discussion around what drugs you might be prescribed in order to help improve your erectile dysfunction. Well, the brand name drug that you're probably most familiar with is Viagra. And this is a class of medicine called a phosphodiesterase 5 or PDE5 inhibitor. And provided that there are no contraindications, this is recommended first line regardless of suspected cause. It's important to know, however, that medicines such as Viagra do not help initiate the erection, but require sexual stimulation in order to facilitate the erection. If the medicine doesn't work, your doctor might then decide to refer you to a specialist. And referral could be arranged to a variety of different specialists depending on the underlying cause of the erectile dysfunction. 
So for example, if it's a young man who's always had problems with erectile dysfunction, or men who've got a history of trauma to the genital area, pelvis or spine trauma, abnormalities with the curvature of the penis, they will typically be referred to men's health doctors known as urologists. Other doctors who might be involved are endocrinologists, if the medical team suspects something like hypogonadism, i.e. you've got abnormal serum testosterone, or maybe to cardiology, if the gentleman has cardiovascular disease that makes sexual activity unsafe or contraindicates something like Viagra use. This brings us to the end of the video, and if you've enjoyed it, please remember to hit the like button, leave a comment in the comments section if you've got any questions, as I reply to everyone as best I can, and I've included lots of useful extra links with information in the description box of the video, so please check those out if you want to know more. As ever, I hope you found the video useful. Until next time, thanks for watching, and bye.